Hey folks, it's Stu from Evolution Unleashed coming to you today with a cut lip, but the show must go on. Today, we're going to dive into this big announcement from Anthropic or the release of Claude 3, their new model, and they are claiming that it is uh, the most powerful model on the market. Their new Opus model apparently outperforms GPT-4, which runs ChatGPT+, across every metric. Now, I'm a wee bit cynical, don't know about you, but Google recently launched Gemini Ultra and said it outperforms across benchmarks as well. And what do you know, it was an unmitigated disaster. Their uh, text to image generation <laughs> wouldn't make white people, went overly woke. They're probably gonna fire their entire diversity team and it was absolute rubbish. And what do you know, it did not beat ChatGPT at all. I did a video on that uh, uh, probably a few weeks ago, which if you scroll around, you'll be able to find, or I'll link it down in the description. But today, we're going to put Anthropic to the test. Are they being like Google and just fine tuning on the benchmarks, but really don't have enough to back it up? Or have they actually developed a more powerful model? Let's go find out. So what we've got for you today is a comparison document. And this is yours free. I've dropped it down in the description or comments, depending on where you're seeing this video. And it is going to show you, uh, give you all the comparisons, the prompts I use, the outputs and whatnot. Now, I'm not gonna read this out to you today, folks. What I'd rather do while you're watching this is give you my thoughts and insights into the differences between the two with the ultimate goal to figure out, well, which model is better for what tasks? And if you could only pick one, which one would it be and why? And I think that is more useful because we're trying to use these tools to create impact, to move us forward. So let's go take a look. So there's a table of contents here to quickly navigate. And the three areas we're looking at, as with Gemini, uh, we're looking at article writing, target market research, and education and learning. So you can just click here. You can have a look at the prompt and the outputs. And what we did is we took the first output from the prompts in their raw form, pasted it here. We tidied up the headings, but we didn't edit any text at all. So we begin with our article writing prompt. Now, I won't read this to you, but this is a, a professional prompt that has been engineered for copywriters to create a lot of articles. We've got copywriters creating 500 articles a week with this because it creates amazing articles. The power of professional prompt engineering, folks. And if you want this prompt, now this one I've already filled in all the placeholders for the purpose of this. But over here, slight tangent before we dive in, here's another free gift for you. The new Ultimate Prompt Toolkit. I finally got it done after four months of working on it. It's a couple of hundred pages long. And this has all our professionally engineered prompts available to you for free. And it includes our, write, this one here, writing epic articles using ChatGPT that has all the placeholders so that you can use this if you're a copywriter. And there's a ton of other really cool prompts here as well, folks. Um, I won't go into that, but the ultimate prompt toolkit is yours. There's a link in the bottom of this document. So you'll be able to get your hands on that. So let's go look at the outputs. Interestingly, uh, the word count Opus from Claude 3 came out much more words, 764. And one of the problems that AI models have had up to today is that they won't write the length that you want. So weirdly, this time, uh, Opus gave exactly what we wanted, 1,000 tokens, 764 words, and it went bang on. So hey, finally, we might have a, a model that can give you a word count. I haven't done enough testing to know for sure, but uh, it's a good positive start for Claude. Okay, so what I liked most between these two in terms of the actual article, what I got it to write about was the power of personalized AI. It's a topic dear to my heart right now, folks. And I really like the title uh, much better from Opus or Claude. Personalized AI, your key to unlocking limitless potential. And it went through and it, it sort of gave it all up. So... Where did each model shine? Well, actually, I have to say entirely that Claude 3 uh, just wiped the floor with GPT-4 here, folks. And for me to say that is the first time I've ever said there's a model better than GPT-4 when it comes to writing. So what I liked about it was it was more nuanced. It gave a lot more sort of rich detail. It really explained concepts uh, at a, what I consider a deeper level, which previously was a strength of GPT-4. And the GPT-4 article is still good, 
The problem with GPT-4 is the way it writes. We all know and love the output from GPT, don't we, or from ChatGPT. It's very robotic. It's got a very um, easy to spot writing style. And sure, with prompt engineering, you can mitigate that somewhat, but you can still recognize that it's ChatGPT if you're not editing the output. Of course, folks, you should edit all AI output before you deploy it to the wild because these models hallucinate, make mistakes. You should be editing every piece of content. Anyway, you're not here for a lecture, are you? That's for our prompt engineering course. Tell you all about that. So when through, you can have a read of these, but I have to say, really impressed with Claude 3. Nuanced, details, uh, really tied it together nicely. But more importantly, it spoke to me as the reader and it really stayed true to the topic. And I really uh, enjoyed reading it. So hands down, Claude 3 beat GPT-4 here, folks. Okay. So that's writing. And we always known that GPT-4 is a bit weaker in writing style. So what about research where GPT-4 was miles ahead? And again, we gave it the identical prompt. Uh, basically, we gave it two pieces of information. Uh, my high-level marketers, business owners, entrepreneurs, and high-paid executives that are too busy. And my offer is fitness coaching, where I help them overcome their last barrier of success, their personal health, in a way that is easy to build into their busy lives, and so on. You can read these prompts. And again, that prompt guide that I just told you about, our toolkit, has all these for free as well. So you can use them in your own business or just to play around and see which model's better. Okay, so we got Alex, Priya, and Michael, three personas. We're going to focus on Alex. Oops, that was a mistake. Oh, what have I done? Let's go back. Gosh, we pressed the wrong button, but I'm not re-editing this video, so you'll just have to get it warts and all, or cuts and all today. Anyway, I digress. Let's look at the values and beliefs. I really like how ChatGPT wrote this, you know, uh, belief in the power of discipline and hard work, gave really good, crunchy, useful information. And as a marketer myself, I can understand the value in this information. I thought it did a very good job. It wiped the floor with Gemini, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty hard to beat when it comes to research. So let's have a look at what uh, Claude had to say about that. And my goodness. Okay, John Smith. Claude, come on, be a little more creative with your names. Emily Johnson, Michael Lee, probably the most common names you could find. But they're just avatar names. We won't penalize it too hard for its naming. You've seen the way I name my products. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not someone to judge. But when I had a look at the emotional drivers, the values, beliefs, the objections, which are the core crunchy stuff you need in marketing to align your messaging effectively, wow, much more nuanced, right bang on. Uh, again, Claude 3 excelled here, folks. And I mean excelled. It talked about the emotions. It talked about their drive, what really uh, made them tick at what I thought from a marketing perspective, at least, was a deeper level. But I also had it do one other thing. And here's the GPT one. I asked it to create an aligned marketing message or a unique value proposition for each of those personas. So a UVP is just basically how we communicate our offer in an outcome focused way to our market. So they understand what we do and more importantly, what's in it for them. Talked about that yesterday's video. Okay. And I love this. Uh, I'm going to read one out here because it's so good. Transform your health and the time it takes to listen to your favorite podcast. Remember, Alex is into podcasts? Wow. Bang on. Absolutely banging marketing. Uh, our bespoke health solution, speaking to that higher sort of level executive, bespoke, uh, fits seamlessly into your entrepreneurial lifestyle, empowering you to achieve big performance without compromise. Love it. I think that is powerful, effective messaging. I've tweaked it a little just to fix the language but very, very good, unique value proposition. So let's have a look at John, who's into golf, reading business books and travel. And let's have a look at what uh, the marketing message alignment was like, because that alignment is a critical skill in AI and I value it heavily, right? So this is an important indicator. Gain an edge in your competition and achieve peak performance by optimizing your health. Uh, already I'm turning off. So very interesting here. And when you look at all three, uh, GPT-4 much better at creating a unique value proposition and aligning that to the market. And that requires a far more complex sort of amount of programming or abilities, reasoning, whatever you want to say. So I think GPT-4 still has an edge there, 
And for me, that's pretty important. So I won't be giving up GPT-4 anytime soon, but if that's the sacrifice, if that's the only sacrifice I have to make, that would be one I'd happily make if I could only choose one or the other because the research was so good from Claude. So this one's a bit tougher. Claude had better research, but GPT-4 had better alignment to the market. And the one that's going to make you the most money is the alignment to your market. And the GPT-4 market breakdown was still very, very good. Now, imagine if we took Claude's output and got GPT-4 to create aligned messaging, we're probably going to get the absolute best we can possibly get out of AI doing it that way. Anyway, last metric. I don't want to keep this video going too long. Education and learning. What I've done is I've given it my Myers-Briggs score, very simple, and said, teach me time management in a way that an INTPA would understand. If you want to go find out your own uh, personality score, folks, here's the, the, the link here, 16personalities.com, entirely free. You can get your Myers-Briggs uh, indicator. And uh, very, very cool. Uh, and then you can actually align AI output to it. Obviously, we go much deeper with Project U Decoded, but this is a good introduction to that concept. So basically, we're asking it how to incorporate time management into busy routines and explain it to a beginner in a way that I can understand. And again, this time, ChatGPT gave much more output, 566 words, versus Opus only gave 391. But when I read them both, now... This is where I can be entirely subjective because I asked it to align it to my writing style, okay? And we just talked about the alignment from the marketing perspective. We thought GPT-4 did better, but in terms of explaining information rather than marketing, which is a different skill set, but a similar sort of functionality, I guess, I really was impressed with Claude, but it also threw up a couple of errors or a couple of issues that I think deserve a bit more sort of diving into before we declare it a winner. I really liked that it understood how to link my personality style to time management. I think the thing, you can read these yourself, but I want to just pull out one thing that it said really that, that blew me away. Uh, where was it? Must be right at the top. So it basically said, yeah, uh, to, where is it? Yeah, here it is. A to-do list will help you complete important items while a calendar alone may allow you to meander without accomplishing priorities. So it's just saying use a basic to-do list. That resonates with me very strongly. I thought the information was very much uh, uh, the sort of information that I would want, but here's where it went a bit, bit off the rails. Um, so here's the exercises to reinforce time management. Now, I know it's probably just needs a bit more. I would need a follow-up from please expand on these to explain it. It would probably do a good job. But part of this test is to give the first outputs and see how good they were. And it's exercises to reinforce time management lessons was a bit odd. Practice prioritizing tasks by filling a jar with rocks, pebbles, and sand in the optimal order. Now, I know it's just speaking about an analogy. It hasn't sort of broken it down and explained that that it is an analogy. So if I was to follow this, literally, I'd be out there getting a jar filling it with rocks, sands, and pebbles, and it wouldn't mean anything. And the same thing here, you know, spend $86,400 as you seconds in a day, but not really giving me anything tangible. Whereas I felt GPT-4 was a bit more tangible, though I didn't think it understood me as well. What I mean by that is it did understand me, but it was trying to create lesson plans <laughs> and exercises and stuff like that. But it did, you know, un un understand a lot of the stuff about me. So this one... I think was close. And I think I'd be happy with either output if I'm completely honest. Uh, but I thought that the way Ford wrote it was a lot better. And it really did resonate until I got down to filling rocks with jars and pebbles. The last thing I did is I hastily wrote a conclusion in here. And uh, I probably left out a couple of the points I've met uh, made today. But I just asked each model to rewrite the conclusion identical word counts, pretty much two words difference. And Claude uh, wrote better again. ChatGPT got a little bit too, uh, here's the deal. Uh, and that's totally cool. We want to find the best AI buddy that helps it knock it out of the park. Now, I'm not sure why it's gone into that mode, but it did. Whereas we didn't get any of that kind of try hard bro stuff from Claude. Anyway, that aside, uh, you can read the conclusion for yourself, folks. Uh, and then before I sort of wrap up, 
here's some additional resources for you. We've obviously got the uh, the free uh, ultimate toolkit, prompt toolkit. We've got a free custom building guide, custom GPT building guide. If you want to build custom GPTs on Chat GPT, free project you decoded going into your uh, wiring and DNA to hugely powerful stuff to align AI to you and who you are massive breakthroughs possible, uh, how to make cool studios like this, and so on and so on. So you can have a look at that, folks. The, the link is below. But I'd be really keen to hear your thoughts. Have you used Claude 3? Uh, where have you found, compared to what you were using, it did well? Where did it drop the ball? Let's sort of collaborate, share our sort of feedback and experience using this model so that we can understand you know, exactly how to use each of these models to the best of their capabilities so that we can create real world impact. Remember, we're not here to create just jokes and silly stuff, um, you know, that, that shallow content. We're here to create real world impact, use AI to give us the biggest edge we can over our competitors, especially moving into this transformational era. So for me, at least, understanding which model is going to maximize my edge is very important. So be very keen to hear your thoughts what you found you like or dislike about both of these models, let us know in the comments. And uh, that's it for today. So hope you enjoyed that little comparison. I'll see you tomorrow in the next video. Peace.